comment in the section down below if you love someone with CDH, know someone with CDH, or you are someone with CDH. Thank you guys. Her mission in life is not merely to survive, but to thrive. And to do so with some passion, some compassion, some humor, and some style. Thank you to everyone that watched the first part of Yahira's story. This will be part two. March 5th, she had a hazy chest x-ray and her oxygen requirement remained high. So she began a diuretic again. The diuretic helped her to lose a lot of the fluid that was accumulating in her body. She also received an NJ tube for feeding due to reflux and the doctor's concerns for micro aspirations. This tube is similar to the NG tube, but it travels past the stomach and into the intestines. Each time it's placed, it needs to be x-rayed to verify that it's located in the correct position. March 6th, she began a new medicine called Sildenafil, commonly known as Viagra, for her pulmonary hypertension. March 8th, she was extubated again, and this time she was ready. She did great. She still had retractions, but she was maintaining her oxygenation much better. At this point, it seemed like she started to improve on a consistent basis. In this clip, if you watch her chest, you can see her retracting. The area around her ribs and diaphragm dimples in, and that's a sign of working hard to breathe. On March 10th, her pick line and arterial IV were removed. She required many blood transfusions during the first month and a half of her life. And I want to take the time to say thank you to all of you out there who give blood. March 11th, we were able to put her on her first piece of clothing. We put her on a onesie. That's so cute. The bubbling on her lips that you see in this clip is a result of the breathing machines. I like to take a picture of her room whenever significant changes occur. It makes me feel like there are milestones. So changes that I would usually take a picture of her room included the reduction of medications or machines or the addition of artwork from her sisters. The shaking in this clip is a symptom of withdrawal. She was placed on methadone March 1st to help wean her off of the powerful meds that she needed. March 17th, she graduated to a crib since she could regulate her body temp. March 18th, we weaned down to a CPAP breathing machine. CPAPs increase the air pressure to prevent lungs from collapsing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Listen to that little sound. You hear her voice? March 20, we moved to the swing side due to her stabilizing and winning off of meds and machines. Hello. Hello. Uh, we're pretty good. Okay. March 30, she received her immunizations. We felt so bad. Just one more, okay? Just one more. It's all finished. Yeah. April 1st, the sisters get to meet. Here I'll insert a clip, one of the activities that the family counselor gave Maya and Leah, and where they talked about being a sister to someone in the NICU. I have a little sister in NICU. Her name is Yahira, and she is two months old now, and she has come a long way from when she was first born. And at first, it may seem scary when you hear that your younger sibling has to be put in NICU. 
But don't worry, he or she is in good hands. It may seem very frustrating or sometimes boring when you have to sit in the waiting room. But it is all worth it when flu season is over and you get to go straight through those double doors and see your sister. Uh, my favorite thing to do is color and draw. April 2nd, she went to a high flow nasal cannon. Again, thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe so you'll get a notification when I upload part 3. And also, I will be answering questions in a different video. So if you have any questions, you can email me or put them down in the comments below.